What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today you're joining me at EVGO and we're testing with my Rivian, the previous software version, 2022.47. And we're now on 2023.3.2, might be .2.3. But this is apparently the update that fixes the Rivian thermal charging problems. And we're recording a session right now from 10 to 70%. The other day I recorded also from 10 to 70% on the previous software. And now we're gonna compare the two. So a little bit of detail as far as charging procedure goes. Uh, I know I mentioned I did the same 10 to 70% charge, but not only am I doing the same 10 to 70% charge, I also am starting with nearly identical uh, battery cell temperatures, so both min and max, and it's nearly identical uh, ambient temperatures. So it's about 70 degrees outside, and as far as battery temperatures, you'll see in a moment here as we jump into uh, future Brandon with the charge analysis, but we're starting at about 29 degrees Celsius uh, max temp and about 26.5 degrees Celsius uh, minimum pack temp. So we should have a very good starting point for both sessions uh, to really understand how the thermals are changed with this new software update and whether it's kicking on cooling sooner, whether it's allowing higher temperatures. I don't know yet. Uh, it hasn't derated yet. Uh, and we've been charging for a little bit now. So I guess we'll see here shortly but I'm really curious to see how this does. Really hopeful that they fixed it, but also a bit of a realist and thinking that it may not be possible for them to fully fix it just with software, but hopefully they can at least change some things. So interesting bit here, we're at 35%. Uh, I hear the fans running, we're getting 214 kilowatts. Battery conditioning does not appear to be triggered. So we'll see here in a, the evaluation, but 50 degrees Celsius and the fans are running, but definitely not at full tilt. Bring it out here. Hopefully you can hear that, but they're running, but not full speed at all. We're still getting a full 500 amps uh, and it probably would have been derated on the previous. So we'll see again in the charge analysis, but 216 kilowatts and it's just now starting to trick her down a little bit. And you're now joining me back in my apartment. We're gonna be going through these charge sessions. So up top, we have the brand new charging software. We have 2023.2.3, and that is the software that Rivian claims that they fix the charging issue with uh, thermals being delayed and triggering, or triggering battery conditioning later on. And down below, we have the older software, 2022.47.0, uh, or maybe it was that too, but either way, the older software, uh, the way I recorded these is that they were 10 to 70% charging sessions. However, I noticed that the amount of energy it took to go from 10% to 11% was actually uh, quite a bit different. So instead of aligning these at start, I actually offset them a bit and aligned it where they were both triggering at 11%. So hopefully that kind of evens things out there is another variable that I know someone will comment about is that uh, in this new software update, Rivian also increased the available battery pack capacity slightly. Uh, it should be about one kilowatt hour or so. It added a very small amount of range to the vehicle. Uh, however, that is a slight factor. But if you watch these sessions with me here, you're going to see that the battery pack voltages are very similar. Uh, which indicates to me that it's not a major shift in available uh, power capacity because the voltages are really kind of your true state of charge indicator, especially when it's under the same load, uh, which at least at the beginning with 500 amps being applied to both vehicles, it is. So without further ado, I highly recommend you put this in full screen or make it bigger on your screen, whatever the case may be, you're going to want to be able to see some of these smaller numbers. And I am using a tool called Teslax, or it's a software called Teslax, which is mostly designed for Teslas and reading their CAN bus data. However, Josh Wardell, the guy behind a product called CAN Server, uh, personally reached out to me and asked me to be part of beta testing for Rivian. So I'll put a link down to CAN Server. It's not commercially available for Rivians yet, but it may be in the future. I don't have a timeline on that quite yet. Uh, and please don't all bombard Josh with asking when it's available. Uh, I don't know if he necessarily has a timeline either. It's not the most refined product yet, and it also doesn't have every bit of information from the CAN bus either yet. So 
I have it pretty early uh, and I'm grateful that I do so I can share some of this information with you guys, but this is not something that's available for everyone. So let's hit play here and watch through these videos and see how they do. So top left, you're gonna see pack voltage, middle is the battery power, so that's in kilowatts, and the top right is in battery current. Below that, we have the minimum pack temperature, we have the max pack temperature, so that kind of gives you the low point and the high point of temperatures within the battery pack. And then we have module eight, module nine. I'm not quite sure the significance of those or if they have any significance, but from what I found, they seem to be kind of a midpoint uh, in the battery temperature. If anyone has any information on that, uh, comment down below or shoot me an email if you'd prefer to not have it out in the public. Would love to know kind of the pack layout and a bit more about where the modules and things are placed. So that way, uh, as we're kind of digging into the CAN bus information, uh, we can see where things are and how they all are related. And then all the way down in the bottom right, you're going to see a zero right now. So this is just a zero one binary value of whether battery conditioning is triggered. I've also found this value to be triggered when it's preconditioning on the way to a DC fast charger. So right now, both are at zero, which is indicating that battery conditioning is not happening. And when they go to one, that means that the battery cooling is actively happening. It seems to be kind of an on off switch of sorts, which is a bit strange behavior. Uh, and I did try to have both of them at as close to similar starting temperatures as possible. Uh, both at about 26, 27 degrees Celsius minimum pack temp and both at 29.5 max pack temperature uh, because I wanted to have this be as scientific and relatable as possible. Outside temperatures, while it does show 57 on the old software and 72 on the new software, if anything, that 72 should probably make things worse. Uh, and as far as outside feel, it felt pretty similar. So I'm not sure if the temperature sensor reading for the ambient temp was 100% accurate but we'll find out. So you can also see some of this charge statistics. Those will also align with the active session. Uh, and they actually changed a little bit on the charging screen. So that's kind of that difference there. You now have some tick marks of the new software for the every 10% or every 25% increment. Uh, and they change it from active session to session summary, or I guess uh, it switches to active session when it's actively charging. So let's get to it here. I'm going to press play. I'm going to walk you through this here. All right. So we immediately see that both shoot up to full 500 amps. We're recording this on an EVgo Delta 500 amp unit, technically actually 540 amps. Uh, and both of them hold that full 500 amps for a decent bit. Actually, it's pretty impressive how long Rivian can hold that. I wish it could hold it a bit longer, of course, otherwise we wouldn't be having this conversation here. Um, but you can also see the battery pack temperatures rising and the battery conditioning is not kicking on, which is really pretty interesting to me. Uh, it's creeping up pretty readily. I'll show some graphs at the end as well. I pulled all the data from the logs of these CAN files. So that way I could give you guys some nice, pretty graphs. And if you want to see those, feel free to skip ahead. Um, but this way you can see as it's happening and how it's reacting. But we're now seven minutes in. This is sped up, I believe, eight times, something like that. And the new software is pulling ahead. We're at 1% ahead, roughly. Both are still pulling that full 500 amps after charging about 17%. And pretty soon is when we're going to start seeing these split apart. We're looking at the roughly 35 to 45% range. That's when the thermals really start to become a problem on the Rivian after they've been pulling that full 500 amps for about eight to 12 minutes or so, that's when it can no longer handle it. You'll start seeing the battery pack temperature. So we're getting close to 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, and when it gets to 50 degrees Celsius, that's when the Rivian truck is kind of like, hey, we need to do something here. So now you're seeing battery conditioning kicking on on both of them. And they're both hitting 52 Celsius. And now watch these temperatures as that battery conditioning is actually happening. And also see on the old software, it's dipping much harder than on the new software. So we're down to almost 100 kilowatts on the old software, whereas the new software is still pulling about 145 kilowatts. And you'll see that the cooling is actually fairly effective when they actually turn it on. So it's a little strange that Rivian isn't kicking it on. New software, again, holding steady at about 140 kilowatts. Old software, about 110, 115 kilowatts. So you'll see this in the graph. It's a lot more of a uh, gradual dip on the new software 
and then a bounce back up. Whereas on the old software, it's a really drastic dip. Uh, and then it comes back up and comes to a similar natural curve of the battery itself. And you're seeing that the temperature spread is actually holding pretty strong. So it seems like the cooling is making the minimum pack temp go down, um, but not having a hugely significant impact on the max temp. So I think Kyle from Out of Specs theory that there's the temperature gradient factor is probably correct, unfortunately, uh, that maybe the battery can't uh, cool the whole pack that well. And you do see that the battery is cooling there. You'll see that message on the lower software and on the new software, but the new or the old software triggered it earlier. And we're coming up to 60%. The new software is 2% ahead, which is a decent amount. We've added almost 80 kilowatt hour. And for reference, that's an entire model three long range battery pack, zero to 100 roughly, which and we're only going from 10 to 65%, just to give you kind of a point of reference of how big the battery is on a Rivian. They claim 135 kilowatt hour. Uh, I personally saw a label on the battery of 141 kilowatt hour, which is a ton, with about 126 kilowatt hour usable. So again, top new software is actually using a little bit more power for the HVAC. You can see that 1.3 kilowatt hour and the lower is using one kilowatt hour. And there we have it. So we did have a very small spread as far as the completion times here. So new software completed in about 31 minutes. Uh, and so did the old software, actually. Um, we're getting up to very close to 32 minutes. So we do save about one minute, roughly. Uh, and you'll see in the graphs that I have coming up here that it actually is about a... Uh, 5% improvement in average charging speed in that 10 to 70% range. And why don't we wrap this up now with a little bit of analysis of the graphs that I'll be putting on the screen as we're talking about them. So we'll start with the old software. So 2022.47.02. And that was the 10 to 70% charging curve, same as uh, on the new software. And at the top here, you'll see the battery temperature. So we have the maximum battery temperature in red, that's that top line. And then we have the minimum pack temperature in blue down below. And you can see as we're charging along, uh, probably worth clarifying, this is from the 10 to 70%. So it's starting at 10%, ending at 70%. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a time scale and I also don't have state of charge. Um, those are just not fields that are in the logs right now. Like I said, this logging system is really not a consumer product quite yet. So hopefully those will be added as they get discovered in the CAN data. But anyway, we have maximum pack temperature in red at the top, minimum pack temperature in blue at the bottom. And then as I mentioned, the battery conditioning is just a zero or one value. So when it goes up to one, I didn't put a scale because it's pretty obvious. Uh, that's when the battery temp or battery cooling is actually kicking in fully. Then down below we have the curve. So as this is just a good visualization of kind of the behavior that we already saw in the recording, but you can see it's kind of ripping along at full power. So we hit just over 210 kilowatt, probably roughly 215 kilowatt. I don't recall exactly what we hit in the recording, um, but that's just the full 500 amps. And then as the battery pack voltage is coming up, that 500 amps becomes slightly more power over time. And then we hit the point where battery conditioning kicks on and then we just absolutely tank uh, as far as charge power. You can see it dips down pretty hard. We actually go down to right about 100 kilowatts. Don't recall if we went just below 100 or we just barely missed it, but we dip all the way down and then we start slowly picking back up as the battery temperature or battery cooling is recovering. You can see as that battery cooling is kicking on, it's actually relatively effective at keeping the battery in check and actually reducing the battery temperature. So it's not terrible, but it's not great once the uh, temperature recovers a bit. And then as we move to the new software, you can see very, very similar behavior. Uh, however, it doesn't dip quite as hard. So we still have that pretty significant dip as the battery cooling is kicking on. And the battery cooling did kick on partially before the battery conditioning uh, flag came on. 
And then when it dipped, it dipped pretty hard. It went down to a low point and then it immediately started coming right back up. So it was less of a curved dip and more of a dip and then recover. And the battery pack temperature did actually get up to the same point and we're still seeing pretty similar thermal behavior in the uh, difference between the max temp and the minimum temp. So I think that's just a characteristic of how the battery is cooled and kind of how it's managing that heat as well as just kind of thermal space or uh, conductivity, I guess you would call it, how it's able to uh, release that heat from the battery and move it into the coolant to run it through the chiller. Between these two, I did do some math in that 11 to 70%, so that way we had an equal starting point. And on the old software, we added 82.5 kilowatt hour in 31 minutes and 15 seconds. That equates to 158.4 kilowatt average speed in that 11 to 70%. Again, I chopped off the 10 to 11%, just being that they added a different amount going from 10 to 11%, so I did that to kind of counteract the little bit of BMS sway that may be in there. It's not perfect. This is not a scientific test. We're not in the lab. We're just testing in the field with my vehicle. Uh, and then with the new software, we had 82.3 kilowatt hour added in 30 minutes and eight seconds, averaging 163.8 kilowatt. That's a decent improvement, actually. That's about three, four percent uh, increase in speed over that 11 to 70 percent. Uh, charging area and we saved one minute and seven seconds. So that's not insignificant. It's certainly not the make or break, um, but we're getting very close to the 30 minute point for a 10 to 70%, which I think is a really normal charging session on a road trip in a Rivian. Personally, I'll probably pull in a little bit lower than the 10% mark, probably closer to the 5% mark. However, 70% is generally where I'm charging up to unless I really have a reason to charge more than that, but I usually don't. And as you can tell, even at the roughly 65% mark or so, it's dipping pretty low as far as charging speed, and it just continues to dip further after that. So it's really not worthwhile to be charging above 70%. Realistically, if you can unplug around that 50% mark, you should, but this is the real world. There's not as many stations as there probably should be today, but as more and more stations are deployed in the field, it will become a lot easier to do that. Anyway, we'd love to hear what you guys think. Any other tests you guys want me to run with this new CAN data? I don't have access to a ton of different parameters yet. More will come, but I do want to hear your requests. And if you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And I'd also encourage you to check out some of my charging infrastructure videos as well as my charging curve test uh, on an even earlier software version comparing 350 kilowatt to 180 kilowatt to 150 kilowatt DC fast chargers. And that was over a five to five or 10% to 85% curve. And I think the results may surprise you, but maybe not after watching this video. Again, see you on the next one.